My name is Guillaume Caron. I am Associate Professor from France at the University of Picardy Jules Verne. And I am also CNRS Delegate at the Joint Robotics Laboratory in Tsukuba, Japan, where this work was done. It's entitled Defocus Based Direct Visual Servoing. In a few words, direct visual servoing aims at minimizing the difference between an image required at the desired pose of the robot, which embeds a camera on its end effector, and the current image acquired at pose P. The difference between both allows computing a Cartesian control velocity vector to be applied to the camera frame to minimize the error. Um, during the last decade, several works uh, allowed to um, enlarge the convergence domain of the direct visual servoing. Because at first, photometric visual servoing was um, accurate at convergence, but uh, suffer of a narrow convergence domain. So recently, 30 centimeters could be reached as the convergence domain extent in terms of translation, even uh, a bit more, 40 centimeters, with a recent re-implementation of the photometric Gaussian mixtures-based visual servoing, or PGMVS for short. The PGMVS considers, instead of images directly, um, the transform of images as a photometric Gaussian mixtures. It's similar to uh, the Gaussian blur of the images, both the current and, and the desire. And um, this allows to cut uh, local minima of the cost function and then to extend the convergence domain. But near convergence, and the control law switches to a much lower amount of Gaussian blur in order to retrieve the details and reach the same precision as uh, photometric visual servoing, so some millimetric precision. Defocus-based direct visual servoing aims at a very similar behavior than PGMVS. So uh, from uh, very blurred images to very sharp images in order to have both the wide convergence domain and uh, the precision at convergence. But the main difference with respect to uh, PGMs or photometric Gaussian mixtures is there is no um, image processing to make images blurred, but uh, consider the defocus blur. So it's an optical blur obtained with large camera aperture. If we compare as a short recall, uh, two settings of uh, the same camera. On the left side, the aperture is narrow. On the right side, it's wide open. If we change uh, the depth of the scene or of the camera with respect to the scene, uh, when we have the narrow aperture, images are quite sharp, even if uh, several tens of centimeters are um, uh, uh, between the, the, the camera and the, and the, and the scene. But if uh, we change the camera depth, when the camera aperture is large, defocus blur appear. And the amount of defocus blur depends on the uh, difference of depth. So um, the interest of uh, defocus is there is no additional degree of freedom uh, compared to uh, the PGM, uh, namely the amount of blur or the extent of the Gaussian blur. And there is no uh, additional computation cost because the blur is uh, directly acquired. So uh, uh, there is no image processing to make images uh, blurred. The counterpart is we need to take uh, into account the defocus blur variation in the control law. And uh, defocus-based uh, DVS aims at minimizing uh, the sum of squared differences between the current and the desired image, actually, Criterion is the same as uh, previous and seminal direct visual servoing. Uh, for instance, the photometric visual servoing uh, solved this um, um, error, so minimized this error by uh, relying on the brightness consistency assumption, classically leading to the optical flow constraint equation, allowing to uh, express in the control law. But before uh, talking about the control law, with the focus, actually, uh, this assumption cannot be kept. And because the brightness becomes inconsistent with the camera um, displacement. And this can be modeled, the variation of intensity can be, or brightness can be modeled by uh, convolution with the normal Gaussian camera. And this leads to uh, this time the focal flow constraint equation. 
which is uh, uh, on its left part, uh, actually the same, uh, despite uh, different notations here, than the optical flow constraint equation. But on the right side, uh, there is no, uh, it's not zero, it's uh, um, the expression of variation of intensity with respect to a variation of uh, depth. And this leads to uh, the um, control law, which is very close to uh, the seminal direct visual sampling. So uh, main difference uh, is for each pixel, uh, the, the, the control law, um, its interaction matrix features an additional line with the, uh, particularly the uh, Laplacian of the acquired image and two additional parameters that are D, the um, uh, size of the camera aperture, and DF, the depth of focus. So when we implement this, uh, compared to the photometric Gaussian mixtures-based visual savoying, PGMVS, which is uh, considered as the reference method in terms of um, uh, convergence domain size, uh, the focus-based DVS is already uh, uh, better in terms of uh, uh, convergence domain uh, extent. For instance, in this setup, which is similar to a, a setup uh, of uh, literatures, literature papers, um, uh, 56 centimeters uh, could, be, uh, could be reached. Uh, it means 56 centimeters between the initial and the desired image or the desired pose. Um, the price to pay is the uh, trajectory, uh, which is more curvy with the new method, but converges from uh, uh, farther. And uh, the other interest is uh, the processing time is very similar to photometric visual surveying, so much lower than a PGMVS, uh, even if in this case, uh, from known of the two initial poses shown here, uh, photometric VS could, uh, could converge. So it's its trajectories are shown in uh, blue in this slide. As another example, um, the DVS can actually converge from much uh, farther than what we could see, 90 centimeters and uh, even 51 degrees combined. Uh, so you have an idea on the left of uh, the distance between the desired, which is a top, uh, uh, sorry, far, far left, and uh, the, the initial pose of the camera. And to, to the right of the slide, uh, it gives an idea of the uh, amount of difference between the current and the desired image. So this video is uh, uh, accelerated uh, uh, forth uh, for, for this uh, presentation, but uh, uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, there is a link for the YouTube video, which is uh, uh, normal speed. Uh, anyway, the, despite the very strong initial error, the control law allows uh, converging to the desired pose. Uh, you can see at the bottom the evolution of the cost, the sum of square differences between current and desired images, which is monotically decreasing. And um, the evolution of the six degrees of freedom, uh, first the translation and to the right, uh, the rotation, uh, both of them, all of them, uh, tending to uh, zero for the sub millimetric uh, precision. Um, so we are, we're also interested in a more systematic uh, convergence evaluation instead of uh, only a few examples. Uh, for this, we choose one desired uh, pose uh, and um, 69 initial poses uh, defined on three uh, spheres uh, concentric to uh, the um, uh, desired position. And each sphere has a radius of 20, 40, and 60 centimeters. So these initial poses are uh, randomly drawn. Um, to give a global ID, uh, here, are, here are the uh, convergence uh, rates or the ratios of successful convergence over total tries. And um, the focus based uh, DVS is um, uh, always a uh, better than PGMVS, even if for the radius, the sphere of radius uh, 20 centimeters, it's very similar. But uh, uh, for the other uh, sphere, it's the, 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 the contribution of DDVS over PGMVS is, uh, is obvious. So the details uh, of the study are in the article's addendum at this uh, archive link. But to, to give another example of uh, a situation where uh, DDVS uh, succeed, but not uh, uh, PGM, 
uh, once again to show the um, the, uh, uh, the kind of very strong initial error that the DVS could uh, correct. Uh, another interesting uh, experiment is for uh, correcting a lateral error only. So here in the setup, uh, you can see on the right side, uh, controlling only uh, four degrees of freedom. So uh, we don't control the horizontal uh, rotations. And uh, the desired image is uh, uh, very uh, uh, basic in terms of uh, uh, content. Uh, so it looks uh, easier, but actually uh, to, to, to allow uh, converging from uh, uh, just a left side uh, initialization, uh, PGMVS, for instance, would uh, increase the blur, then move the camera, and then decrease the blur while moving the camera in order to reach uh, the uh, uh, finest precision. Interestingly, uh, um, the focus-based uh, DVS uh, actually uh, features very similar behavior, so increasing the blur and then moving the camera and decreasing the blur to retrieve the highest precision. But the main difference, of course, is uh, to increase the blur. Uh, since the blur is uh, uh, the result of the defocus, uh, the camera needs to, to move uh, here, to move back uh, about 18 centimeters in order to increase enough the blur uh, to, uh, to, to, to converge. Mm, we also wanted to um, study the effect of uh, slight changes in the scene. Um, and here in this uh, setup, actually, we changed the background uh, between the acquisition of the desired image and the current ones with uh, putting or removing a blue chair. And here is the, the example for the DVS, where uh, the desired image on the left uh, does not feature the blue chair, and the chair is inserted, as you can see in the video, in the background of uh, um, the current images. And uh, despite this, uh, convergence uh, is uh, still submillimetric, as in other cases, uh, without changing the scene. And you can see on the uh, right side uh, the residual error to give a qualitative ID. It's um, the same uh, conclusion where uh, the, the chair is in the desired image, but not in the current ones. Uh, the DVS is not uh, perturbed uh, by these changes. Um, but for PGMVS, uh, it's another story because um, on the right side, when we uh, uh, insert the, um, the, the chair in the background, actually it leads to a much um, um, poorer um, precision at convergence. Here I highlighted by the residual error to give a qualitative ID. And um, uh, even, uh, even worse, uh, when we remove uh, the, the chair, uh, actually the difference is uh, too important. Uh, I mean, the difference between the current and the desired image is too important for PGMVS to not only converge, but to move uh, toward the correct direction. So here it diverges, which both results show uh, the contribution of DDVS over PGMVS. To conclude, uh, I would say uh, only that uh, defocus-based direct visual servering is computationally as efficient and as precise as photometric visual servering, so with semi-metric precision. It's the DVS of largest convergence domain, even uh, larger than other intensity-based methods recently published, and uh, it shows more robustness to scene changes than PGMVS. The counterpart is uh, trajectories are curvy, but the future works uh, toward straighter trajectories uh, are ongoing. Uh, one about uh, controlling uh, the focus parameters, so aperture and the focus depth, together with the six degrees of freedom um, of the camera. And also, uh, it's not detailed in this presentation, but uh, a little bit in the paper. Um, preconditioning methods uh, for um, all uh, direct visual servering in order to, to, to improve the trajectory uh, curvature. Um, so as I said uh, previously, uh, uh, on this uh, uh, YouTube uh, link, uh, you can see the videos of experiments at uh, normal speed. I thank you a lot for uh, attention.